Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was a movie that I was lukewarm in going to see. You know, I, I wasn't too sure about it. The trailers definitely didn't sell on me and I'm starting to feel a little bit of Spider-Man fatigue. We had the three Sam, Sam Raimi movies. We had the, the Andrew Garfield two. We had Homecoming, which was a particularly fantastic movie. I'll give it that. And uh, now we've got another big screen uh, Spider-Man movie before we get one again later this year. So I went along to this movie just going, what's it got to offer? What is this? How's this going to differ from the other Spider-Man movies? Now, the story uh, instantly differentiates itself because we have Miles Morales, a, a young kid who is about to become our Spider-Man, our Spider-Person in this universe. And there is things going on out with his uh, realm. The, the reason he gets into Spider-Man is because of some strange spider down in the, the sewer system where he's doing some graffiti work that bites him. And this is a strange, unusual type spider, something that's obviously escaped from some place where it, uh, not in this kind of universe. And it transpires that Kingpin, who is going to be our main villain in this episode, uh, this movie, is trying to tap into multiverse theory because he lost his family. He wants to get his family back and by doing so has caused several spider people to come to this one universe and uh, they're going to team up and pretty much kick King Wynn's ass. Simple story, um, seems kind of basic and is hell of a good film. This is possibly my favourite iteration of Spider-Man that I've seen in the big screen. This movie zipped by for a movie that's almost two hours in length and one of the first things I want to touch on is the visual style of the movie. It is the closest I have ever seen to a real comic appearing on the big screen. From the style, it, it's very comic bookish to the points where he starts to hear his inner thoughts and they appear as little yellow boxes above him. Um, it has just that, that almost page turning effect uh, with his transitions as well which is just really fantastic. And you're into this world and you're fully realised and you're instigated to uh, Miles' his, uh, school life. You know, he's recently moved to a, a sort of more elite school because he uh, did really well and it's a kind of scholarship that he's won. He has a strange relationship with his police man father. He has a better relationship with his kind of layabout uncle who, you know, doesn't have a great relationship with uh, Miles' his father. And um, we get a character who it seems very capable and is thrust into greatness yet again that we've seen before. But this time he's not alone. We are given another five different spider people to help him out. And we get, you know, Peter Parker, an older Peter Parker to start off with. We get a, a younger Peter Parker that, that dies on us very early on in the movie. Um, we are given Gwen Stacy as uh, spider woman. Uh, we have um, some strange robotic uh, thing that a girl goes in and, and uses a, a, a kind of mind meld telepathic link with a spider to control it. We have uh, Spider-Man Noir which is, is awesome and then we have Spider-Pig. Now you'd think by the time that these characters come into it and the, the, sort of the Noir, uh, the, the spider tech thing and uh, Spider-Pig come into it, you're thinking this is this is too much, but it feels fitting within this world. When you're watching this uh, 2D spider pig talk and act and do things that are Looney Tunes-esque, it feels right. It doesn't feel out with this movie, even though they are from completely different places. It all fits and works together. The voice acting is tremendous, giving each character its individuality. You know, you, you, as soon as you hear the voice, you latch onto who that person is. It's styled towards that character. And we have a world which is really fun to visit. The storyline is, is not um, anything particularly new, but realistically what is these days, but it imbues it with a sense of really good characters doing you know positive things to try and better themselves, save the day, the usual kind of stuff, but it's all about the characters. And that's what I bought into in this movie. That's what really attracted me to it. I was having great fun with all these versions of Spider-Man together in one universe, something that I didn't think I would attune to. Along with the visual style, the storytelling, the voice acting, the, the, the way Spider-Man moves and leaps and, and careers through this city is just simply wondrous to see. It's a movie that I can see myself going back to watching several times. It is 
a visual feast. It is a fantastic story that you're going to latch on to. It has almost everything. For me, it was an easy five out of five. I walked out the cinema with a huge smile on my face going, yes, that was one of the best movies I've seen. I loved it for that. And going into it with a movie with a character who you feel as if you're having a little bit of fatigue with and to come out going, wow, that was amazing. It was truly something special. I'd love to know your opinion on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Let me know in the comment box below and I will see you next time on Man vs. Film.